Good morning, everyone. We are back here at day two at MLP Daytona Beach. We're at uh, Pictonet, Holly Hill. It is a beautiful day. We had a great day yesterday as well as we started off the Challenger portion of MLP. Now today we're going to be starting out the premier level. Um, we've got a matchup here between the Seattle Pioneers and Milwaukee Mashers. I'm joined in the booth by professional pickleball player, let's say former. I like that. Podcaster, <laughs> content creator, uh, father, Adam Stone here in the booth. Thanks for joining me. Oh, very excited to be here, Mr. Mr. Insect Pong. Uh, we got a, a doozy of a matchup to start off the day. Uh, as you mentioned, the Seattle Pioneers and the Milwaukee Mashers as we have a train coming by. Uh, both teams advanced through pool play at our MLP Mesa. So um, lots of talent on the court. All these competitors very comfortable with each other. And I would say for me, the pick to click is Megan Dizon. That's, that's my pick to click. She has some peaks and valleys in her game. The peaks are very, very good, but occasionally some inconsistencies creep in. If she can play solid with her three other very quality teammates, Tyler Lung, Etta Wright, and Ben Johns, uh, watch out for the Pioneers. Yeah, and as you mentioned, Seattle Pioneers, they made it to the semifinal of MLP Mesa, ended up uh, losing to the New York Hustlers. And, yeah, from inconsistency standpoint, I think Megan Dijon, there's some opportunity there that they've taken from the previous event. And... You know what? She's executed in the past few weeks. She just ended mm -hmm. up making it to the finals on PPA Tour and in Austin. I think she's on hopefully an incredible run, and they're going to need that if they want to do any damage this weekend. Yeah, definitely, and I, I certainly didn't mean what I said as a knock at all. Uh, I, I'm, I, I'm just a regular player i don't have peaks <laughs> so so there, there's a lot uh, there's a lot of different ways to get to your talent so that's all i was saying she has just so much power and so much shot making ability that you know when you have those options uh, sometimes some so, some inconsistencies creep in as we see uh kind of the meeting of the minds here with uh, dave fleming the gm of the pioneers and of course ben johns uh who you basically draft the best player in the world a coach and a gm all in one uh the, the, the Wonder Kid can do it all. So uh, uh, very excited to see what the Pioneers have for us and a very, very tall veteran team in the Milwaukee Mashers. Uh, they are going to be more than a formidable opponent for the Pioneers. Yeah, with the Milwaukee Mashers, we've got Lucy Kovalova. We've got Callie Smith, also Andre Deescu and DJ Young. I think that entire team averages over 6'2 in height, 6'3. <laughs> yes. So, Adam, I apologize, but you may not be able to make the cut <laughs> for them. Um, they're, you know, from, from, from a physical standpoint, they're an uh, imposing team, right? Mm -hmm. There can be some intimidation there. They're going to need to feed off of that if they want to make a run here this weekend. Do you, do you think we might see some energy from the Mashers in this, in this women's matchup, possibly, uh, with Lucy Kovalova and Callie Smith? Here we go. No question. Lucy Kovalova, Callie Smith against Etta Wright and Megan Dijon to start off. Oh, yes. Absolutely. You'll take that right off the bat. <laughs> We've got a fifth player, the net, involved early. <laughs> Always the best player on the court, Brandon. <laughs> nice pressure from Etta Wright coming forward. Pretty reasonable slide to her right with the two-hander from Lucy. Maybe maybe a couple uh, feet off the kitchen line cost her that one. Great ball by Etta Wright. Just a little bit high, and Kovalova finishes that with a little net tick herself, as you see her on the replay. Adam, both these teams going to look to be aggressive early. I would expect that for sure. Still in the filling out process here. Uh, early this morning. And that ball just off the top of the paddle there for Etta Wright. Yeah, I would expect to see uh, Callie Smith uh, uh, pretty solid with that two-handed counterattack. Doesn't love to speed up with two hands, so when she's looking to be aggressive, I would expect her to continue to look for that one-handed backhand out of the air.
Oh, it's a great counter there by Callie Smith as she takes the attack there by Dijon and just slides to her left and finishes down the middle. She almost has, it's not a Riley Newman pancake, but it's almost a, a, a semi-pancake. She's one of the better ladies at kind of covering her right shoulder, and you saw it right there. Yeah, Dijon with a counter of her own on the two-hand backhand side. We talk about that, Kovalova and Dijon sporting the two-hand backhand, mm -hmm. while you've got Edda Wright and Callie Smith using more of a one-hand backhand approach. Yeah, it's been, it's been cool to see some of the progressions and the, the techniques and the grips and the, you know, using two hands. When I first started five or six years ago, Brandon, there wasn't a lot of two-handed backhands, especially on the men's side. And now you have a variety of players using a variety of different shots. Love to see the progression. <laughs> Kovalova getting skinny there after the <laughs> big drive from Dizon. That ball just long there as Dijon is sporting that black ace paddle there from Pro Connects. It has a lot of pop on Lots it. Lots <laughs> of pop. Can she rein it in is the question. But man, that ball flies off the paddle. Really nice grind from all four ladies. And for you lower la level players back at home, the footwork is just so efficient. Watch the footwork and the controlled lunge. They Sometimes they don't even take a step. They have that wide athletic base. They use the lunge and they keep that contact point and center of gravity so locked in. Great speed up there by Callie Smith as she kind of just uh, jammed up Dijon there with that two-hand backhand. I mean, perfect spot. Absolutely perfect. Uh, don't even really think Dijon was late. Uh, just, just too good of a shot from Callie. Tip your cap on that one. And that ball goes just wide. Earlier we had Edda Wright winning a dink rally cross court with Callie Smith. I think from a confidence standpoint, that's huge going against a team with as many accolades as Kovalova and Smith. Yes, and, and Edda Wright, I wouldn't say new on the scene, we'll say relatively new on the scene, but really, uh, you know, whatever playing the game the right way is, she certainly does it. Lots of soft stuff early in her career, very impressive. Great defense by the Mashers. Stop it, ladies. Unbelievable. Wow. <laughs> and the Pioneers keep the pressure going as Edda Wright and Dijon crack each ball that they can see. And just a little bit too much there for Kovalova and Smith. I mean, they made them, made them play 10 balls, but my goodness, great pressure from the Pioneers. Edda Wright pulling off that forehand a little bit. We, could, we had a bird's eye view of that. Sometimes you get down, locked and loaded with that that nice athletic base, but sometimes you pop up too early. I think that's what happened there to Etta. Oh, great ball there by Smith, that ball just a little high from Dijon, and she cracks it cross court directly at right here. Yeah, it looks like we're uh, Pioneers definitely targeting Callie Smith at the kitchen line early on. Mixed results. Oh, good get by Wright. Great defense on the first one by Kovalova, but just a too much to get out of as Dijon finishes that. Yeah, that's right. You you don't want to hit the ball shoulder or above against the Pioneers. <laughs> Either one of these ladies, lots of power when that ball goes up high. Yeah. 
Yeah, great ball by Wright. I'm impressed with the pace that Edda Wright plays with as they make the change over here at 11-8. But just great pace, great poise. Uh, and so early on in the in her career here in professional pickleball. Yeah, no, I, t I talked about it a couple minute ago, minutes ago. I think you're exactly right, Brandon. You see you see the talent, the grip it and rip it, the hands often when these players kind of burst on the scene. But to be so controlled, uh, as you mentioned, in the midcourt, in the back of the court, and up at the kitchen line with the soft stuff, uh, very impressive uh, from Edda Wright, uh, as you mentioned earlier in her career, probably – only on the tournament scene for around a year, maybe a little bit less, Brandon. Yeah, and from a strategy standpoint, you talk about the mashers right now are trying to isolate Dijon, right, and see if they can get some opportunities there. And on the flip side, you've got Edda Wright, Dijon, that seem to be targeting Callie Smith. Mm -hmm. um, wh what are they seeing as an opportunity on that side? You mentioned there's mixed results. Right. Well, we, we saw Callie Smith with some phenomenal speed ups uh, a couple times there. But I think what it is is just how – much of a veteran rock right side Kovalova is. She's so good with the backhand counters and the forehand dinks at the kitchen. It's kind of a pick your poison situation. So they're starting off with Callie. There you go, just like you said, Brandon, maybe uh, uh, not that uh, Megan Dizon is uh, a big target up there at the kitchen line, but same thing with Kovalova. If Edda Wright is so consistent and solid, maybe you just switch it over, put the ball on the other, other player and see what happens. Yeah, we talked about just maybe the occasional inconsistency from, from Dijon, and I think for the Mashers that they're trying to see if they can get uh, some leverage from that. That's right, and when you have Callie Smith with the heavy counterattack hands, it's a lot of pressure for Dijon. Great ATP by Kovalova. A little too hot to handle there by Wright. As we see here on the replay, this ball just goes a little too wide by Dijon, and Kovalova finishes. Nice spot from Edda Wright. Yeah, nice pace again on yeah, that. Yeah, right, exactly right. It's not... You know, not just she didn't patty cake it and, and invite Kovalova forward and she didn't hit it as hard as she could. Nice mid paced right at the right spot. That's all it takes sometimes. Yeah. That first drive, probably a little too much pace. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that looked like vintage Lucy Kovalova stringing Dijon out on that right side. Yeah, and man, when she when she gets her, her feet a little further than shoulder width apart, she's so good at reaching into the kitchen when using her 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 height to her advantage. One of the best in the game at it, really. The drive by Kovalova handled by Dijon there, and a little too much angle for Smith. Yeah, she was coming in hot, and I think that's reasonable given her partner driving, but the spot of the drive from Kovalova right to the backhand of Dizon. Pioneers clinging on to a two-point lead here. Make it three as that ball goes a little wide there from Kovalova. Big drive by Dijon, and she finishes it off with a little three-ball combo here. Yeah, that was right. Each one was about two feet closer to the kitchen, and, I mean, you can see it. I mean, you got two of the better defensive players around who are pretzeled up, swinging on different sides, and that's just a testament to the power of Megan Dijon. We have a timeout here by the Milwaukee Mashers as they're down four. A nice four-point run by the Seattle Pioneers. We keep talking about pace. Adam, why is pace so important, especially at the pro level? Well, uh, I think personally, 
a variety of paces or not. Sometimes at the lower levels, you just hit it hard and it works. But uh, against these quality of, of opponents, if you don't have a little, a little soft, a little medium, and then that full release when you really want to go for it, these players are just too good. So uh, you have to put a wrinkle in what you're doing. You have to change it up a little bit. I don't care how good your shot is. If you go to the same spot or the same pace every time, you're going to be in trouble. Just way too much talent on the court these days. Awesome analysis for everyone out there watching and, and listening as well. We're back. We've got a 16-12 lead here by the Seattle Pioneers. This is the first game in this matchup. Callie Smith's eyes lit up right there as she saw that high ball and really just cranked that two-hand backhand a little too much. Oh, we've all been there. <laughs> See an opportunity, maybe hesitate for a second, and then it just, it just goes away real quick. Oh, great counter there by DeJonas. She's starting to play with some great pace there. She just pushes that ball right through the middle. Oh, she didn't. She was not waiting for Etta. She was already lurking in the middle before Etta struck that third shot. Awesome job by Megan Dizon. Great defense by the Pioneers. I mean, I'm not sure there's a situation more demoralizing in pickleball when you're in the full-fledged offensive position at the kitchen line, your opponents are scrambling, and then they get back to neutral. It's just so tough, Brandon. Great job by the Pioneers. And the Masters finally break that hot streak there by the Pioneers. They've got some work to do here, down six, 13-19. Smith trying the speed up there to make some things happen. Can't falter at this point in the game, trying to really get aggressive. Uh, but the margins are small here at 2013. We've got a game point. And just in case you guys are new to the broadcast, so what happens when a team gets to 20, their score is frozen and they must win on their serve. The other team can continue to accumulate points while the other team is stuck on 20. Yes, called the freeze. And right now, as Dijon puts that ball way through the middle, they're frozen at 20-13. Now we have a game point. I mean, what a shot. Yeah, was Wasn't even a poor dink. Yeah, I like that spot by Dijon, but Callie Smith just really read it yeah. and uh, slid to her left. Yeah, she's an explosive mover, Brandon. <laughs> uh, I mean, that was she got a late break on it, and she was right where she needed to be. Tries to make something happen there. Maybe too low on that first attack. Kovalova wasn't able to clean it up. Yeah, Smith definitely a little questionable with some of the offense on the left side. Maybe one of the only real knocks uh, when she is over there. As, as I mentioned, her athleticism and her physical presence is one of the best on tour. Yeah, we take a look at like the last three rallies and she's made a play, missed a play, made a play, missed a play. Let's mm -hmm. see if they can get two point run here. Oh, gets a ball that she likes, just not able to put it down. No, you're exactly right. Uh, they're going to take that, you know, seven, eight, nine times out of ten. Uh, she was sitting right there with the forehand, and Dizon was a couple feet off the kitchen line. So Mashers like that spot didn't work out that time. Another game point attempt here for the Pioneers. 
and bounces off the tape. DeJon with the sorry as Kovalova still kind of had a chance uh, to get that ball. Uh, Kova, no, no, no uh, yeah, nothing from Kovalova. She kind of just took it and tapped paddles. But that was an interesting situation uh, as I don't think Dizon understood how long Lucy Kovalova <laughs> was as she almost got that ball. Yeah, I thought we <laughs> might hear a possible hindrance in that. Look, we talk about players being somewhat inconsistent at this level and you know, usually that means they're getting 10 balls, but not the 11th. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> yes, yeah, for sure, for sure. I think DeZone played a great game there. It's a good start for the Seattle Pioneers. Now coming up, we've got Ben Johns and Tyler Lung against DJ Young and Andre Deescu. This is going to be a crazy matchup. Oh, <laughs> yeah. No, I'm, I'm very excited for this one. Uh, but, yeah, yeah to, to your point, you were just saying, Brandon, you, you got in this game a couple years too late because it used to only take one or two good shots to win a point uh, wow. back in 2018 or 2017 when I first started. So uh, the level of the game is crazy. I mean, you see these combinations. You, you don't – there's not – there's not a – even a two or a three shot combination often. Some of these matchups when you get the def defensive prowess on court, you, you almost have to get to double digit quality shots to win a point. That's what it takes. Absolutely right. We are going to let these players warm up and we will be back here in a few minutes for the men's matchup. Right now, Seattle Pioneers are up 1-0 on the Milwaukee Mashers. All right, we are back here at MLP Daytona Beach, Pictona at Holly Hill, and we've got a great matchup for you right now between Ben Johns, Tyler Lung of the Seattle Pioneers against DJ Young and Andre Dascu from the Milwaukee Mashers. Yeah. Big drive to <laughs> yeah. start by DJ he's, Young. He's just so, like, smooth, and it flows, and it's just that easy power with the loose arm. I'm jealous. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the power right there. But I, I would actually say this matchup right here is similar to the women where DJ Young is Megan Dizon. The other players may be a little more tight in their uh, peaks in their valleys, but DJ can play amazing and then occasionally have some errors in matches as well. So uh, where Dizon played great that last match, let's see what DJ Young can come up uh, here with his partner, Andre Deescu. 1-1 one, one tie game as that fifth shot from DJ a little too high. May not work in this matchup. Some 
great baseline defense from Tyler Lung as he's incorporated a two-hand backhand in the recent years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Tyler Lung, you don't know what he's going to do from the back of the court. He, he might drop his third. He might rip his seventh. You, you really have. He goes hard and low, or he goes with that nice drop into the kitchen, uh, keeps his opponents off balance from the back of the court. To be perfectly honest with you, I wouldn't necessarily teach certain players or coach certain players to do that, but he has a crazy athletic skill set, and when you can scramble and move like him, you can get away with a few things other people can't. <laughs> Boy, this one is getting away from the Milwaukee Masters in a hurry here at a five-point lead, 6-1 here for the Pioneers. I'd like to see a timeout if they don't come on top of this rally. It's a nice shot, but, yeah. re but really not a lot of extended points or just very, very quick points and boom, 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 as you mentioned. Uh, things happen quickly. It can get away from you before you know it. Oh, great defense by Young. As he thought the point was over, <laughs> yeah. but that ball actually made it. Yeah, and anytime you've got the best player in the game, Ben Johns, on the other side, last thing you want to do is give easy points away. Easier said than done. Uh, great ball there by Diescu as he jams up. Ben Johns. Yeah, good decision by Dayescu is kind of, you saw Ben Johns lurking there to try to pick something off. So a few balls to Loon that was back, and then Ben was sort of a sitting duck, if that's possible for him to be uh, up at the kitchen line. Nice shot from Andre. Another missed fifth there by Young. He's going to have to dial it in here pretty quick. It's an 8-3 lead by the Pioneers. Heavy. Ball I mean, my goodness, right there. it's just, I mean, a ton of power. Listen, all these paddles were checked by MLP <laughs> yes. before we got here. Um, they may check that one again with the pace that was on. Great ball by Young. Yeah. Nice job by Ben John stepping over to his left. He's always in the middle being a presence and a, honestly a pretty quality ball from DJ Young, but to to get over there with the two-handed backhand and pop that counterattack, well played by Ben. Oh, great ball by Lung. Yeah, and let's, I, I wanna talk about, there might have been a couple opportunities there for Tyler Lung to attack, but he's playing with Ben Johns and they have a game plan and he is sticking to that game plan. He That ball needs to really be there for him to attack that ball. Otherwise, they're just going to work the point uh, as Ben Johns, the best player in the world, especially when they're structured points at the kitchen line, Brandon. Great defense by Johns. And That's Loom gets the two-hand counter to go in as they take an 11-5 lead. Watch this crazy defense here as Deescu in the middle fires, Ben John gets it back, and then Loom completes the play there. I mean, it's just, it's so annoying. It's so annoying when you get in those positions. Like, how does Ben dig himself out of that? He can't be in a more defensive position. And then three shots later, his partner's ripping a two-handed backhand up the middle. Uh, very good stuff from the Pioneers. And... There is not going to be anything changing over on that far end of the court. Let's see if we get a couple adjustments here from the Mashers. Yeah, and Ben Johns, as you mentioned, the number one player in the world on the men's side. And it seems as if he's playing in slow motion at times. Like, is the game moving at half speed for him? Correct. <laughs> Co correct. That's exactly right. That ball just long there as Johns looks over to his bench to see if they want to challenge that. They confirm it's a little long. Yeah, nice eye from DJ.
I understand the Pioneers are mostly targeting DJ Young, but we, we certainly have not said Andre Deescu's name very much, and him being over on the left side, they have to find a way to get in some patterns to force the ball to Andre. The Ernie by Loon. And Ben Johns finishes it off. That was a, a lot of moving parts yes, on, yes. on that rally there. That's right. So when you have Tyler Loon always available for the Ernies, uh, sometimes you get some weird formations out there. Yeah, great combo by Loon. You mentioned he's taking his chances sparingly when he mm -hmm. sees an opportunity, and that was one clearly for him. Yeah, I mean, that's, yeah, ba I mean, I, I played, I don't know, 100 tournaments with Deckel Barr, and when the big man's hot, I'm not attacking anything, you know? If he's struggling a little bit, maybe I'll, I'll pick my spots and go for it, but if he's playing hot and playing well, I'm just playing super consistent and letting him do his thing. Oh, great get by Young. As Lung and Johns went for a put away in the middle, Deescu with great defense. I mean, that was ridiculous <laughs> get from Andre Deescu. Get right here. Uh, what an angle. <laughs> by, what an effortless angle there by Ben Johns. Yeah, that's, uh, you could put that word effortless probably before every, everything he does on the court. And a rare missed third opportunity there. I think for Milwaukee Masters, they've got to take this and use it as some momentum because it's a 9-15 deficit. I just, I, I mean, I, I feel like I'm pretty solid at analyzing the game of pickleball, Brandon, and I'm just not exactly sure where they should go right now. Deficit down to five. And those are the ones they can't miss uh, in this type of matchup, which puts a lot of pressure when even when you play a great point, it's tough. And then now you've got to make every single ball. Yeah, DJ. Nice lean in from DJ using his length. But yeah, it's, I mean, it is. You're exactly right. It's a lot of pressure. You know when your margin for error is so slim, uh, you know, not with your shots, but just with the, the quality of your opponents, it's, it's a, it's, totally uh, mental warfare out there. And you, if you think that these guys aren't thinking a little bit about that, then you're, you're wrong. <laughs> ben Johns gets the dribbler over the net as if he needed another opportunity. That sprawls into a missed return by Deescu, and we are quickly at an 18-11 lead for the Pioneers. Great job keeping Tyler Lung back as he wasn't able to convert. I do think one area of opportunity for the Milwaukee Masters is maybe continuing on that back side of Johns with, with some low to mid-pace balls. Yeah, I think that's reasonable, Brandon. And the thing is, though, he's he's got a lefty over there with him. So he's probably taking just a little less court than normal having that lefty forehand. So it's like I said, it's a tough proposition. R a very reasonable thought, but I just don't know. <laughs> very slim margins. Oh, great counter by Lung. Yeah. yeah. Young saw that the entire way. It was a great flip by Ben Johns. Yeah, well, hey, what, what are they what are they putting the w in the water down in Dreamland? <laughs> Everybody's doing scorpions down there. Deckel Bar, Vivian David, they love that shot. There's a scorpion drink. Ask the bartender. <laughs> what a get by Young. Little overcooked there by Deescu on the on the counter.
you mentioned the unseen pressure, the mental warfare that kind of happens mm -hmm. as you see the mm -hmm. Seattle Pioneers win this matchup 21-13, and that last ball is a great example of it. DJ Young goes cross court. He attempts to go down the line, but there's so much heavy pressure knowing mm -hmm. that in front of you, there's this guy named Ben Johns <laughs> yes. that kind of knows what he's doing out there. Yes, and it's, it's a tough break. I would have just liked to see a couple more extended points and a little more rhythm to see with it. it just never quite got into the match almost uh, the entire time. I believe they were down 6-1, so almost a, a five-point-plus deficit throughout. So never, never really put a thought in the Pioneers' mind that maybe they're going to come storming back. So a uh, tough break from the Mashers, and they're really going to have to step it up and make doubles with this 0-2 deficit. Yeah, and there's, there's – you know, people out there that would say, hey, well, if you're in a situation like that, just fire away. Just cause as much chaos as possible. <laughs> um, Adam, is that a strategy that um, can work? Well, I would probably put that pretty far down the list. But, I, I mean, if the situation is dire enough, <laughs> you, you, you got to do something. Uh, I, always, I always say, you know, uh, uh, Ben is one of the better bullies, meaning when you do get into those structured points, he really – moves his dinks around and puts pressure, you know, on on his opponents being that bully. And, you know, sometimes sometimes you run away from the bully. Sometimes you got to hit him in the mouth too, Brandon. So uh, maybe taking a few more attacks at that backside like you were talking about, high to that backhand, uh, could have been a better option. But uh, uh, most of the options were, were very limited <laughs> against that, that quality of opposition. Yeah, and we talk about discipline. Uh, Tyler Lung and Ben Johns came in with a strategy. You saw Lung adhering to that strategy for most, if not the entire game. It'll be interesting to see in these mixed double matchups who is going to play the most disciplined mm -hmm. pickleball, right? Well, I would, and I would put it at the Pioneers. I, I talked about Ben being a, you know, he's a, he's a kid, but he's a smart kid. He, he knows the game very well, and that's what he does. He likes to come in with a not a crazy specific game plan but just a solid game plan and then his mind's pretty blank other than that maybe maybe a a very small in-game adjustment or two but you come in with that kind of default strategy that you can you can fall back on and then you just you just go out there and play and, and you know obviously Ben John's one of the best at that so uh, yeah, it's 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 step up time for sure here with DJ and Cali. Uh, looks like they're going to come out first for mixed doubles, and yeah, it's go time. Yeah, Tyler Lung and Megan Dijon from the Seattle Pioneers are going to be facing Cali Smith and DJ Young. Looking forward to this matchup. We are now playing all four games in the series uh, at MLP Mesa. They were just playing best of four or best of three, right? Or right. Of, and then yeah. so so now they mixed in uh, to where the, the actual game wins will be above that point differential percentage. So um, I, I, I like the rule switch. I think it's solid, but we will be playing all four. And, yeah, just in case you're just joining us, uh, we had the women's doubles, the men's doubles, and we have two mixed doubles. Obviously, if a team wins three of those four or four of four, the, uh, the match will be over, but if we go 2-2, two, two, Brandon, we're going to go to a dream breaker, which means each team will set a lineup, play four points at a time. Men can play women. Men can play men. It's, it's a really interesting, uh, awesome part of MLP, and the Masters are going to need to step up if we're going to get to one of those dream breakers. I think m most, if not all, fans out here would love to see a dream breaker, especially between these two teams with so many uh, – singles specialist here and one of the best as well so we'll see quite a tall task right now for the milwaukee mashers uh, uh, we're going to take a just a quick 30 second break and we'll be right back All right, we're back at the start of this mixed doubles matchup. DJ Young, Callie Smith against Tyler Lung and Megan Dijon. Oh. 
And it's clear the Milwaukee Masters are coming out with some fire. Yeah, and I've a uh, 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 handful of tournaments last year. Uh, my wife, Corinne Carr, played with DJ Young, and I was on the sidelines for a lot of those, and DJ can play big. Certainly an active mover, especially on the mixed double scene. Yeah, and this is a little surprising. I know Callie Smith comfortable. She played left with, with women's doubles, but this is surprising to see DJ Young on the right. We'll see if they switch that up, stick with it. Uh, I, I guess some of the fact that they both played those respective sides in their gender matches comes into play, but uh, I was expecting to see DJ Young on the left. Yeah, I think maybe trying to counter the Lung and Dizan matchup over here. Uh, but yeah, yes, I, right, I, I right, totally right. agree, I think having them on the, the proper, the other sides may be the best fit, but we'll see. Yes. Nice little miss hit on the first one, but she was in the right spot and a nice clean two-handed backhand on the last ball. I mean, I, I don't, I'm not sure I've seen Tyler Loon make an unforced error yet. A forced one a couple points ago, but he's playing a very clean game right now. Dizon a little bit too long on that forehand. Yeah, great ball by Young as he just continued to probe on the backside of Dizon there until he got one high enough to put away. That's right, and I, I would expect uh, the Pioneers to keep the ball away from out wide DJ Young forehand. That's the spot where he has a lot of options, and I think if they get too out wide to his forehand, that's gonna put Dizon in a tough spot. Yeah, maybe Young um, trying to create a uh, different format for men's on mixed doubles, right? <laughs> yeah, Dominating right. from the right side. Go right, right side, strong side. Yeah, yeah come on. <laughs> And Tyler Lung dreams about those type of opportunities. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, he has the athleticism to do it. But I'll tell you right now, that was anticipation. I mean, he was moving before DJ Young struck the ball. Great job from Tyler. That's the one right there. Not quite a traditional roll. It's kind of a, a little roll and a little poke. And sometimes uh, it gets her in trouble with that one-handed speed up. A great ball on the backside there from Young. And, and you're right, that, that one-handed speed up, if it's too much push, it's not going to get the rotations topspin to go over the net. Um, and if it's too little push, then it's obviously going to not clear. Yes, so that's no, definitely. And, and I, I would say that, um, you know, Edda Wright has a pretty good one. It's a little more traditional, and it flows a little nicer. So, um, you know, you can't have it all. All of these players continually working on their game outside of just playing. We've got an 8-6 lead here from Dizon and Long. <laughs> we'll let, we'll let uh, uh, Megan Dizon do the analysis for us. She goes, stop going to DJ. Yeah. <laughs> At least to that right side on the right. forehand, yes. right? Where there's extended options, as you mentioned. I mean, if, if yeah, you, you got to play to Cali or middle. I mean, I will, you know, if he hits a couple good two-handed backhands off the bounce, you know, that's great, DJ. That's awesome. But I'd, I'd keep it away from that forehand. Yeah, and one of the a advantages that they'll have is since he is on that strong right side, as he moves over to his left, he doesn't have that extended reach Correct. as if he was on the left side with his forehand.
Dizon attempts a one-hand backhand herself and tells the bench, I don't have that. Uh, <laughs> she may have it, she may have it next week. <laughs> Big serve from Smith. <laughs> she, she had that one, though, she didn't she? That. Redemption. <laughs> Almost a crazy recovery there by Young, but Dizon with just enough pressure. Yeah. Pretty good stuff. That's I mean, great I away. mean Tyler Loon. I mean, uh, I'm, it's it's it, it's that situation. Of course, I'm the player that is going to notice a consistent rock and how valuable they are out there. Uh, he hasn't done anything special. A couple Ernie's, couple nice shots, of course. But he is playing a very smart, very consistent game. And Brandon, that's exactly with this team construction, what he needs to do. So very impressed uh, with Tyler Loon out there, a veteran of the game, and he's showing it right now. Great game plan so far by the Seattle Pioneers for the Milwaukee Mashers with DJ Young on the right side and Callie Smith on the left side. Um, what do they need to do to get back into this matchup? Only down two here. Right, so I, I, I would look for, for DJ to continue to do his thing. He's kind of crab walking, meaning that lateral movement on the kitchen line nicely. And I would really look for Callie to be consistent and solid and wait for a really good opportunity. I think there might have been a couple shots that she forced in terms of speed ups. It's okay to stay in that grind pattern with Megan D's on cross court. Uh, don't have to pull the trigger too early. Great Ernie there by Tyler Lung. It's, he shows one with the forehand. Now he shows one with the backhand cross court. Mm -hmm. Truly the Ernie King out there. Pioneers clinging on to a three-point lead here. Yes. Great tomahawk by tomahawk. DJ Young. Every, everyone's got a different name. I like tomahawk, though. It's good. It's we good, saw that from uh, your boy Brandon French the other day. Uh, yesterday, in fact, and it's a tough shot. A couple guys doing it. See Zane Navratil as well. Oh, that's a great ball by Dizon there as she's going to, uh, trying to go behind DJ Young there as he fades to his left to cover mm -hmm. as much court. Well timed. Yeah. 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 Nice hands. I mean, I want to say at least 80% of the winners that Young has had today in these last two games have been on that right side, mm -hmm. and probably about a one to two foot margin mm -hmm. on the sideline. Big loopy serve by Young. I mean, you see that shot and it's, <laughs> I mean, he takes it mid shin and I, I might have landed in the kitchen with a two handed backhand drive. So good from DJ. And that ball just a little bit too high there from Smith. Even there, Tyler Lung puts the proper pace on the ball. Yeah, he has a really, really nice deceptive inside out forehand. He rarely hooks it uh, kind of at the person right in front of him, but he can play the middle ball and the inside out ball very well. Oh, what a poach by Dizon and Lung could not get there to get this ball off of the net. It was a great block by Young. Yeah, well done, everyone. Love the poach, love the hands from DJ. Good stuff. Yeah. 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 
and there, DJ. There he is. <laughs> yeah, one of the players that can definitely, definitely get fired up quickly and go on a hot run. Let's see if he can do it here as they tie this game up 15 15 and pick up an easy one. Hey, I like earning points, but I like gifts too, Brandon. <laughs> What a kid by Smith. It was a great knife dink on the backhand side by D-Zone, and I thought Callie handled it well to go around the post just a little bit short. Oh, she had the angle, but as you mentioned, just too much slice and too much ball took off when it hit the court. Make that two tomahawks in the bank now for DJ Young. <laughs> Dizon threw up uh, what we will call uh, a bait ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that was maybe we'll call it a Hail Mary on that one. It worked out though. Yeah, even Young was surprised by uh, how high that ball was. <laughs> it's, a, it's just a carbon copy. I think there's three points that have been the exact same. <laughs> the Tomahawk Bank says there are three <laughs> available now for DJ Young. That's a great counter by Tyler Lung there as he almost got jammed up kind of in that chicken wing section between the forehand and the backhand, but was able to extend out enough. Yeah, I don't hate the spot from DJ. Uh, I mentioned the, the tipping the cap earlier. Sometimes it's just too good, like the offense and the defense was just a little better. All these points count the same and 18-18 with that miss makes it 19-18 here for Milwaukee Mashers. Great hands at the kitchen line. And Lung is attempting to hit everything with his forehand here as he just continues to slide. Big moment here for both teams. And Smith with the out ball. That puts the Seattle Pioneers at game point here. It's a great low pickup with the two-hand backhand by Young. Yeah, he, uh, uh, Tyler, he doesn't want to be over there on that left side. He, he's like, put me back where I want to be. <laughs> We've got the Pioneers frozen at 20, which means they're going to have to win on their serve, and they've got another chance and attempt here. The big put away by Smith as Loon takes an extra long look at that to make sure it was in. Yeah, it might have been a little closer than Callie wanted, but it definitely, definitely inside the line from my vantage point. There's that inside outer. Yeah, just that's so, it's just so slippery, Brandon. Like you could see there's not a ton of pace. That's like a 60, 60, 70% pace, but just nothing DJ Young can do. Nothing to read. Oh, it no. was a great spot by Callie Smith. She just oh. hit it too long. It was like perfectly. She was literally hitting the ball as Tyler Lung was breaking to the middle. Uh, love the decision and the timing of it, but just a little too much. Like you said, Brandon, tough break. And Seattle Pioneers have officially clinched this match, even though we will absolutely be playing this second mixed. Yeah, we talk about sticking to the game plan. They definitely did that to come out on top. 
We will let the final mixed teams warm up. We'll have Andre Deescu and Lucy Kovalova against Ben Johns and Etta Wright. We'll see you soon. All right, we are back with game number four in this matchup. Right now, the Seattle Pioneers are up three to zero. They have already clinched this match, but we will play out the fourth game. We've got Ben Johns, Etta Wright, against Lucy Kovalova and Andre Deescu. Yeah, every, yeah. Well, I was just gonna say, Brandon, everything matters. Uh, the Milwaukee Mashers at MLP Mesa went one and two and through point differential percentage, we're able to get through. So these games and points are huge. Nice speed up from Andre Deescu. Just a, just a hair late on the slide from uh, Etta Wright. Uh, I like the idea and what she did, just half a second too slow. Yeah, Deescu's gonna need to be aggressive here if they wanna come out on top. Kovalova allows him to take the third there. <laughs> what a I mean, counter that's not, that, by I mean, that's Pinch not right. Johns. I mean, a total, total miss hit. I mean, I'm sure he was aiming to that spot, but it got there a little tricky. I mean, Andre Deskew definitely has the length to be a presence up there. Big man at 6'5". So call him Romanian Tower 1. Ed and Lika, Romanian Tower 2. So those guys know how to play. Been around for a while, Andre. Appropriate names. <laughs> yeah. The Ernie by Ben Johns, the second Ernie there. <laughs> great defense by the Milwaukee Mashers until Kovalova with one just a little bit high. Yeah, no, I mean, I like the move. I mean, she ripped a two-hander as well as she can. Uh, and Mr. Johns handled it, so uh, the point point was fine, just too good.
And that's two times now that Deescu has been able to come on top of mm -hmm. that speed up uh, at her right, not fully sliding to her right. Great defense by Wright. <laughs> Tough. And another. Yeah, that's that's pickleball right there. Best to get of, of any of the matches and gets hit, on, hit in the shoulder on the next ball. <laughs> But uh, I wanted to mention also, I played one tournament with Ben, lost with Deckel, both very dominant players. It's very easy to play with them, Brandon, but it does, there is a few things that are tough. I'll talk about that after this point. Too good from Lucy Kopalova. That's yeah, just an awesome shot right there. She sees a little bit of an opening down on that right side. And I mean, she has to hit an incredible ball to even make this. Absolutely. So uh, what I was going to mention earlier is that you have to give those dominant players a lot of room to operate. So I think Edward Wright is hitting some of those counterattacks a couple feet further back than she's used to. And that might have been an issue with those initial two counters that she missed. Yeah, I mean, I, I wouldn't want to play with anyone else uh, than those two guys, but there is a couple things that, that, that is difficult when you're playing with such a, a talented uh, a partner. So just wanted to make that clear to some of the viewers at home. It's not all roses, even though it's a lot of roses when you play <laughs> with those guys. Yeah, and time on court matters. This is the second event for Wright and Johns. And with the grueling schedule, and Johns normally playing with Annalee Waters, may not get as much time to practice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that's uh, it's an interesting point because because she missed a few of those slides early, I think she's a somewhat off-centered mm -hmm. on what ball's going to be wide and what's not, and you see it there. And there's a great reach in by Wright to flip that ball there and uh, cause the error. Kovalova wanted to attack that. I think she was kind of in the middle of it, and the net didn't help by popping it up to Ben Johnson. That's certainly true, but I, I, I'm not sure that was a forced offense, but it wasn't an obvious attack. So we'll see if Lucy wants to stay in that pattern with Etta or if she's going to maybe pull some triggers like we saw on that previous point. I don't think Etta's going to stop. I think she's going to, once they get in that pattern, she's just going to stay. So let's see what, uh, see what Lucy counteracts that with. Yeah, good ball there by Daskus. He had options on where to put that one away. and A nice in and out ball. Yes, and uh, I mentioned that with Tyler Lung earlier. Andre Daskus also a big fan of hitting his forehand inside out. Daskus comes in hot. Saw an opportunity off there. A good fifth, seventh drop and just a little too much pace on that ball. Yeah, I don't hate it. Kovalova trying to make things happen there again with that forehand. Only a one point lead here for the Pioneers. He knew it right when he hit it. Tried to give it the ferry hop, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't get it over. <laughs> we see a lot of players doing that. <laughs> the extra momentum. Yeah. 
Yeah, I was going to say, I think that's a crucial point there for the Mashers to get to the changeover on their terms, up one. Um, we, we talked about this matchup and Ben Johns being a easy player to play with in some respects and being difficult in some respects when it comes to understanding how to play with with, mm -hmm. with their, their game. Mm -hmm. um, what in, in your eyes, what makes Colin so good at being able to play on that right side of Ben Johns? Well being yeah, being being related is good, but they're they're very analytical guys. And they have they have their patterns and their situations. They practice with a purpose. Um, they they I mean Colin basically got into pickleball because of Ben. So from day one, he has been catering his game to play with Ben. You mentioned court time earlier, Brandon, with some of these teams. So uh, uh, maybe it's a combination of the skill set of Colin and his whole career has been molded to play with his brother. So there you go. That certainly makes things easier when you're tailoring to play with uh, one player. We've got uh, now a tie ball game. It's 11-11 here. Johns benefits from the tape. I mean, it's just not right, Brandon. I, I mean, like that's just not right. <laughs> I'd like to see, honestly, some fire here from the Milwaukee yeah. Mashers, right? Yes. You're down. It's 3-0. Let's at least get some momentum carried for the next match. Yeah, I think you're I think you're absolutely right. I know sometimes you're down 8-1 in a regular tournament, but don't lose 11-2. You may make a little run and that can that can leak over and that can carry over to a subsequent game. So I think that's a good comment. Especially with these particular players. Callie and Lucy, two of the more fiery ladies on tour, and DJ Young can throw out a pretty big yell as well. So we haven't seen much of that. I know they're not winning this match, but I would like to see some more fire, as you mentioned, to, uh, you know, spring. I mean, 3-1 and 4-0 is a big difference. And as you mentioned, another match today and another match tomorrow morning. Uh, let's keep that energy up. Yeah, and, and, you know, there aren't a ton of things that we've seen been able to rattle Ben Johns, but one of the few things, minute things, are, is energy. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Ernie, the Burt by Ben Johns. <laughs> That's wow. a great point to win by the Masters. I'll tell you what, there's not a lot of Burts that are successful, and that team doesn't win the point. So uh, awesome hands from the Mashers. But, yes, uh, we have our first Burt of the afternoon or morning. Nice athleticism. It's just great probing there by Johns as he faked being able to give Deescu an Ernie opportunity and then kind of works his way through the point. Yeah, nice soft hands from Andre early in that point, but regrouped from the, the Pioneers and too much pressure. And there's the fire we talked about. A great point, nice fire fight from Deescu at the kitchen line with Ben Johns and Let's see if they can turn that into some momentum here. I mean, it's a tie ball game. Easy put away there by Johns.
a great get by Johns. And an awesome put away. Adam, one to ten, how high level was that point? Yeah, I tell you what. The, I mean, I, I, I love these points at the kitchen line. It sounds like an NBA game. I don't know if we have the microphone to where the fans can hear, but the footwork and the, the screeching, screeching of the shoes, man, these guys are athletic. And gals. And so often after we see a high energy <laughs> point yeah, like that, right. Uh, mentally tough to recoup, and Pioneers take a three-point lead here. Uh, we talk about the margins being so small in this matchup, and overall we look at it, it's 3-0 Seattle Pioneers. But, Adam, within every game, it's been a few-point difference um, that the Pioneers have been able to come on top of. Right, and it's it's been relatively comfortable. Sure, there's been some tight spots, but the Pioneers seem to always step up and and have a nice little run when they need it. But it's been a, a comfortable win in these previous three matches, and I think the point differential for all three matches is probably around 10 or 12 points. So uh, when, when you're talking about a comfortable win and it's only 10-point differential, man, uh, any lapses of focus, uh, uh, you know, mentally or, or a couple, couple uh, handful of loose errors uh, on the physical side of things, man, it can change very quickly, and that's all it takes when you're playing with this, th these quality players. A little bit of danger zone in this game now for the Milwaukee Mashers as they're down three. <laughs> Big firefight by Johnson Deescu. I thought Deescu missed an opportunity for a forehand there earlier. Mm -hmm. Elected to allow Kovalova to reset that back in the kitchen. Nice length from Andre. Couple solid hands up at the kitchen line from Andre Deescu. Yeah, and that's the ball I want to see him take. Look, we're late in this game right, right now towards the end, but I think that is an opportunity for Deescu with his long reach. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you gotta you gotta use what you got, Brandon. So, you know, I'm five eight, so I probably I probably dig balls at my feet better than a lot of these guys, but Andre's a big man and a lot of these tall players use your length. If you're not taking advantage of your wingspan, you are not utilizing all the tools that you have. Play big. I was wondering why you're so good at defense. <laughs> Seattle Pioneers take this one 21 17. Did you see that ball just a little bit long from Deescu? And they complete the sweep here. A 4 0 win for the Milwaukee Mashers to start their MLP uh, Daytona Beach journey here. Uh, I think it was a great match and a great win overall for them. Definitely. A really solid way to start. Um, and, you know, uh, the, the Masters advanced <laughs> in, in MLP Mesa. So, you know, this isn't what, what one of the, you know, bottom dwelling teams or, 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 or one of the weaker teams in the field. So to have that comfortable win at 4-0, really match never fully in doubt at any moment. Uh, great job by the Pioneers and some very solid momentum moving forward in this tournament. We've got more Pro Pickleball coming up for you later. Uh, stay with us. We will be back. I think Adam will be heading to championship court later on today. That's right. So I have two, I have two matches there, and I think I have one more back here. So we, we, we got a little merry-go-round going today. So you're going to get a if, – if, if you don't like us, you got somebody else coming in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pleasure to be here with you, and we will be back. See you all soon.